My name is Dean Dre. I'm an equity research analyst with Citigroup in New York. Uh, I'm a sell side research analyst. Um, and uh, part of my broader responsibility is at Citi, I'm the head of global industrials research as well as the head of the water sector research at Citi. I also have a day job, and that is to cover the multi industry and electrical equipment group. So I get it, I say I have the distinct pleasure and curse of covering some of the most complicated conglomerates, so like GE, United Technologies, 3M, Emerson, and so forth. And more than half of those companies have a meaningful water business, whether it's on the equipment or services side, and that's how I got involved in the water sector. So I have three quick points I'd like to touch on today and be very interested in hearing questions uh, from the group. Uh, the first is a bit about how we look at the water sector globally. Uh, it's a unique uh, way on how we aggregate all the equipment and services Services that compromise, uh, comprise the global water sector. A bit about climate change and how that fits in with the broader range of the risks of the supply imbalances uh, in the water sector. And lastly, and this brought up was brought up before, where there are risks, there are certainly opportunities, and we're seeing market responses on uh, water scarcity and climate change. And just to touch on a couple examples of those. So first, within the water sector, I always like to say, and it's a little bit shocking when I speak to investors, is there's no such thing as a water sector. Uh, there's not one homogeneous sector, but it's really uh, a group of at least 14 subsectors, and each of them has a group of companies uh, and technologies. So uh, there's a se separate sector for pumps, as there is for valves, filtration, services, automation, engineering. Each one of those is a separate subsector within water. Broadly, it's about $450 billion annually of revenues, and it's growing defensively about 4 to 6 percent. That's the way investors look at this space. But it encompasses everyone from municipal, industrial, commercial, food and beverage, um, uh, we heard about Starbucks earlier. So I cover Pent Air. Pent Air provides the filtration to every Starbucks in the world. And they're, they're filtering the water because the water quality differs between whether it's in Stockholm, New York, Bangalore. Starbucks wants to taste exactly the same way. And 98% of the coffee is water. So that's an example of the types of water equipment and services and how that translates uh, into commercial opportunities. Climate change. So when Ivo asked me to speak about climate change, climate change is just one piece of the uh, what we call the broader issue of the supply-demand imbalances. Uh, and I want to touch on this. Um, and I'm getting more questions. I've been. I was on uh, Bloomberg Television last week. They asked me to speak because everyone's talking about the drought. Uh, it's now up to 60% of the, uh, the, the the southern region of the U.S in a drought that is bigger and worse than anything in, in more than 50 years. It will have longer term consequences uh, in terms of how the market responds and efficiencies, different types of products, uh, and we're certainly seeing that. But climate change is also, uh, along with uh, population, pollution, urbanization, all of this is putting stress on uh, overall water availability and quality. We're not going to touch on all the solutions, but when we talk about it, the first ones that always uh, get most discussion is water reuse. Uh, last month I was in Singapore. Singapore has zero sources of natural water. Technically, no one should ever live there, but what they're able to do is they, they used to pipe water in from Malaysia. Now they have desalination. They are one of the largest cities uh, focused on water reuse. Real showcase uh, uh, of what the future cities should be in terms of uh, water reuse. So we're seeing that. Question came up about market pricing on water. Um, and I agree 100%. Water is always a local issue. Uh, it's harder to transport water than it is to transport oil. Uh, and it costs more to transport water. So it's just, it ends up being a local issue. It's always out of balance. It's in uh, areas, it's an oversupply where you don't want it. Think of Hurricane Isaac right now in the US, and it's in scarce regions, um, and, but it's always out of balance. So in terms of the market opportunities, uh, it's, 
so again, we follow companies that are in products and services addressing this. So there are market opportunities. Think about agriculture. 70% uh, of all water demanded in the world goes to farming. More than half of it is wasted. So I'm seeing more development on drip irrigation. I'm seeing more development on, um, for companies like Valmont and Lindsay in terms of how they uh, address uh, irrigation systems. Uh, and big focus there, big opportunity, because again, there's a lot of waste. The whole nexus between energy and water, uh, I'll pick out one, fracking. Fracking has, drive down the, has driven down the whole natural gas price in the U.S. Fracking is more about water than it is about natural gas. Uh, they need three to five million gallons of fresh water per well. And then what flows back is absolutely poison and has to be treated and there'll be new EPA rules about that. So big focus on uh, the, the interrelation between oil and water, population growth. Uh, the last point on the industrial growth, if emerging markets don't have access to fresh water, you see more companies, including ones that I follow, that are saying we can't invest in this region because we don't have access uh, to uh, high quality available water. So it has long term economic impact. Um, last point, I know this has got a big debate, is does the market have a focus on this? Uh, and it is still what I say at the early stages uh, about what the water risks are. Um, and I'll give you one example. It seemed to be a big surprise on a conference call with a commercial roofing company that I follow where analysts seem to su be surprised that if it's not raining, roofs don't leak, and if roofs don't leak, they don't sell as much roofing material. So it's beginning to seep in. Uh, it's still at the early stages, uh, and it's efforts like uh, United Nations Environmental Program um, that Evo is part of, that I'm, I'm privileged to be a part of. It's that type of work that's getting and raising the awareness. So I'd be very interested in hearing what some of the questions are from the group. Thank you.